welcome to Trending Faith here on GCU TV. My name is Ashley Romantic and let's get started with today's question. The Bible includes ethical commands and moral guidelines, but a lot of people don't believe that the Bible is true. So is it reasonable for Christians to expect non-Christians to agree with them on ethical issues? What would you say to that, Tim? No. Okay. <laughs> you want me to finish? Yes, yeah. go for it. Um, I, I don't think it's reasonable for us to expect people who uh, do not have a commitment to following uh, what the Scripture teaches to have the same moral compass that a Christian might. And I think it's a little unfair. And I think uh, uh, we as Christians need to respect that there are people that just see the world differently than we do. And we have to learn how to live um, you know, under the same sky with them and figure out how to relate to people, have a different compass or a different way of looking at the world. And so I think a lot of Christians are really frustrated with that. I think uh, we want everybody to believe just like we do. And I, you know, I, I think we all probably think we're right about most things. And so, uh, but it's difficult when we're, when we're interacting with people who have a different commitment, a different worldview, and they don't draw it from scriptural truth for us to expect them to see the world like we do. So I think that's, I think it's really unreasonable. I think it's unfair. And I think we as Christians need to um, think a little bit differently about people who have a different perspective than we do and how we interact with them. And it's, it can be challenging, especially, you know, living in America where we've, uh, Christians have had kind of a seat at the table for a long time and many of our values and our perspectives have been embra embraced at many levels of either government or society or uh, community and we've been very comfortable in the world, uh, in American world for a number of decades. But things are changing and values are changing, perspectives are changing and uh, the, the place that God's truth um, uh, is held in modern society is different than it was 20, 30, 50 years ago. And so there are a lot of differing views that make up society and the conversation about life today. So we as Christians, I think, need to figure out how we're going to respond to people that see the world differently than us. Uh, Jesus lived in a world that saw the world very differently than he did. And so we need to take our lead from how he interacted with people, how he created conversation, how he taught, how he served, how he loved people. And I think it's really a, a challenge for us as Christians today to think through what it's going to look like for us to live out our faith in a world that's very different than us. And Jesus lived in a world like that, so it's probably not a bad idea to go back to studying Jesus and how he lived and how he taught and how he related and how he viewed people that saw the world differently than he did and how he interacted with them. And so that's a, that's a huge responsibility, but I think that's what we're called to do. I think we're called to follow Jesus and how he lived out um, the good news, how he lived out uh, being a, a representative, a member of a different kingdom, a different way of looking at life. So, you know, I, I, it's a challenge no doubt for all of us because we've been in a pretty comfortable set of circumstances for many years, but as society be continues to change, um, you know, and it maybe moves away in many, in many uh, places from a Christian perspective, then how are we going to respond to that? And I think many of us are anxious about it, uh, we're frustrated, we're, many are angry. And I think we need to figure out, all right, is this the way Jesus would respond mm -hmm. to a changing environment? I don't know. I don't think some of us, and I say us collectively as God's people, you know, um, Jesus followers, that sometimes we respond like Jesus would in these situations. So I don't know if my opinion's right or not, but that's my opinion. You, you know, I, I think it's... Um it's interesting to me that North American Christians for years have been very open to the possibility of crossing cultural lines and going into other countries and taking the time to learn how people think, how they reason, their language, their, their cultural symbols and so forth, and then trying to speak into that and, and to connect with them. But it's almost like the North American church was com caught completely unaware that 
you know, there would be <laughs> different understandings, different ways of thinking within our midst. And so, yeah, I think we're at a we're at a moment where things have shifted, and we're trying to figure out why don't people understand me. But we should be very open to, to pausing, slowing down at least, may, perhaps even pausing, taking time to, as James would say, be uh, slow to speak, slow to become angry, and uh, s- quick to listen. And, and we're not always quick to listen. I do think that there's some wisdom even in Scripture. Scripture gives us some examples at least of how you might engage a culture that's not Christian, not not really open to the Christian worldview. So. Uh, the Apostle Paul in Acts 17 walks right into the middle of, of Greek life in the Areopagus there in Athens, and he's perplexed. All these people are worshiping these other gods. Other worldviews are, are in play, and he, he looks at that, and he's, he's really bothered by that. He wants to speak into that. But what you'll notice if you read the passage, you read the story, as he doesn't start quoting scripture and say, well, here's what Genesis 1 says, here's what Deuteronomy has to offer, he doesn't speak a language that's foreign to those people. He begins to reason with them and to speak with them in ways that they can make sense of. In fact, he even quotes some of their poets. He start, he says, look, you are God's offspring. We as human beings are God's offspring, which is to quote some of the pagan poets of the day. And he says, in light of that, since you know that, starting at a point where they already grasp something that's consistent with what he believes, created in the image of God, Genesis chapters uh, 1 and 2. On the basis of that, you ought to know better than some of these things that you're doing. You ought to know that's not how God is. So Paul didn't quote scripture, but he reasoned with people, and then he begins to turn the corner to talk to them about things they didn't understand yet. Jesus, uh, crucifixion, resurrection, and so on. It's a fascinating dynamic, but I think very often... um, if we want to be wise, we will speak to people in ways that really start where they are and help them to move forward and, and perhaps really engage us in dialogue at some of these these critical points. And that's just a way of loving your neighbor as you love yourself. If I wouldn't want somebody, you know, throwing a rock at me and, and asking me to catch it, like it or not, understand it or not, then I shouldn't throw rocks, so to speak, at other people. So yeah, I think the way of Christ in in these situations is is difficult, but it's a very reasonable way to approach. That's a great story. Uh, uh, Acts 17 and the art of conversation, mm-hmm. learning how to be winsome in interacting with people. I mean, it's, it's a lost heart for, for some of us that are you know, uh, committed to the faith. I mean, we, we are right, and mm-hmm. we're going to make sure everybody knows we're right. And sometimes it takes you know, more skill to engage in conversation that's difficult with people that have a different view of us. And so that's a great passage. Okay, well, I hope that answers your question. And as always, if you have a question or a comment, please feel free to send it to us at trendingfaith at gcu.edu or use the hashtag trendingfaith.